Microwaves are an awesome invention. They're in almost every home nowadays, and their main purpose is to heat up your food. Now, you can normally use an oven to heat up your food, but an oven takes quite a while. But this microwave can heat up food in maybe one minute, where it would take an oven like 20 or 30 minutes to heat up. So they're really useful and really cool. But how much does the average consumer really know about how this microwave actually works? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Okay, so to get started, let's crack open this microwave. See what's inside. Now that we have the microwave open, you can see inside, and you can see that we have five main parts that power this thing. So we have the logic controller board right here, we have the magnetron, we have the microwave oven transformer, we have the capacitor, and then we have a diode. So those main parts are what create all the microwaves. Now all these other switches and wires and things are just to make sure that your microwave does not overheat. Like this is an emergency cutoff switch that will turn off your microwave if it gets too hot. And these switches only allow your microwave to turn on when the door is closed. So the logic controller board's only purpose is to turn on and off the circuit that makes the microwaves. So the circuit that makes the microwaves only consists of the magnetron, the microwave transformer, the diode, and the capacitor. So let's see how this circuit actually works and how the magnetron is able to turn some high voltage into radio waves that heat up your food. By taking a look at a microwave schematic, which is kind of like what I have on my wall right here. Okay, so this is a circuit of a microwave, and this circuit can pretty much apply to any microwave. So these little things right here are just the cutout switches that I was telling you about, and when it overheats it turns it off. And then of course we have a fuse, and then we have the logic controller board, and all that does is turn on a relay, and it turns on the actual microwave circuit, which is right here. As you can see, we have the two relays just for uh, safety precautions. Now the programmer circuit right here is just a timer that you set that turns on and off the microwave circuit. So let's start with the transformer. So a transformer is a device that can step up a voltage based on two coils. In a transformer like this, we have a primary coil and a secondary coil. And in small low voltage transformers like this, 110 volts AC is fed into this primary coil of the transformer, and that creates a magnetic field that goes this way through the transformer. And that magnetic field, since it's alternating back and forth, induces a current in the second magnetic coil, and that current flows through these pins as the secondary coil. Now in a microwave, we have the primary coil right here, and the primary coil is 110 volts, which comes for, directly from the wall. Now we have the secondary coil, and the secondary coil actually has more windings than the primary coil, because the ratio in the voltage change is the ratio of windings. So because there's a higher ratio, which means there's more windings in the secondary coil, the voltage coming out is going to be about 2,000 volts AC. Now, we're going to worry about this high voltage in just a second, but first we're going to look at this coil. Remember how I was talking about this transformer and saying it could also step the voltage down? Well, this little coil right here is another part of the microwave transformer, and this is about two rounds of wire, and this steps the 110 volts down to about three or four volts AC. Now, this little low voltage coil right here is going to power the filaments of the magnetron. So now back to the high voltage part. Now what happens is this voltage isn't enough. 2000 volts isn't enough to drive a magnetron, so we have to step that voltage up. Also, the magnetron can only run on DC current. DC current is when the current flows in one direction, and AC current is when the current changes directions in a sine wave like this. Now what happens is we have something with a capacitor and a diode, and this forms something called a voltage doubler. Now pretty much what this does is it doubles the high voltage AC from here into about 4000 volts uh, DC coming right here. How the voltage doubler works is when the current first flows through the coil, it charges up this capacitor to the about 2000 volts DC that's coming from this coil. Now what happens is then when the current reverses flow, it's blocked, and since there's two 2000 volts, it actually doubles the DC voltage. So now we have about 4000 to 5000 volts DC 
on this point and this point, and we have about 6.3 volts AC, or maybe a little bit less, on these two points. And so those two voltages are what's going to be driving the magnetron. The capacitor, the transformer, and the diode are just there to make those two voltages, they're the power supply. Now these two magnetrons are kind of like vacuum tubes. If we take a look at a schematic for a vacuum tube um, diode, then it'll look something like this. We'll have a heated filament in the bottom that is circuit diagram like this, and we'll have an anode, which looks something like this. When you run current flow through this little filament, the filament starts to heat up, and when it heats up, it starts to emit electrons off of it. Now, if we were to just leave this vacuum to business, the electrons would just float around. But if we were to apply a positive potential to this anode, and a negative potential to one of the pins in this cathode, then what would happen is the electrons, since they're extremely charged negative from this, will start flowing towards the plate, and they'll go extremely fast. Now, these little electrons will hit the plate, and then flow through the circuit. It'll make a complete circuit right here. So let's draw a picture of the inside of this magnetron vacuum tube. Let's take a look. So this is what a magnetron would look like if we cut it open and looked at the inside. So we'd see this hollow ring with something in the middle called the filament, like the filament of the vacuum tube I was talking to you about. We would then see all these little copper rings around the side. Now what happens is when this filament heats up, then the electrons will start to be emitted around it, and they'll form this little cloud of electrons around all these rings. Now what's going to happen is when we charge this filament with an extreme negative potential, such as negative 6,000 volts, and we charge this, or the side, to ground, then the electrons will want to flow from here to here. Now if we just turn this on as is, the electrons would flow directly to the sides in straight paths. Now the reason that this thing is called a magnetron is because it has magnets on top of it. These magnets are here and here, and as you can see, if I throw a little resistor inside there, the resistor sticks to the magnets. Now what happens is these magnets form this rotating magnetic field around this magnetron chamber, and the chamber is right sandwiched in between these two little magnets right here. So these magnets actually are going to be actually bending the trajectories of these electrons. So instead of going in a straight path like this, the electrons are actually going to start bending, and they're going to form a little spiral going around this filament before eventually hitting the outside or the metal part. So if we look at it like this, the electrons will start, and the magnetic field will make them flow like this, in this little spiral. Now the cool thing about this is it'll make the electrons kind of blow over these little holes right here. Now because the electrons are blowing over these resonant cavities right here, that is actually what causes the microwaves to be formed inside these cavities. Now this may be kind of difficult to understand, so let me show you. Now this pan flute actually works similarly to the resonant cavities inside a microwave. Because inside the microwave magnetron, you saw those little tiny holes inside my picture. Now those holes are kind of like this, and those electrons blowing over the holes are kind of like my air blowing over these. So if I blow across one of these little resonant cavities inside the bamboo, then you'll start to hear a sound. So just like when I blew over that pan flute thing, and the air molecules flew across it like this, they created that oscillation that went back and forth inside of this, of the air. It created a sine wave. Now, this is a sound wave and not an electromagnetic wave. Now, when the electrons blow over this little tiny metal cylinder, they create kind of the same phenomenon, but instead they create an electromagnetic wave. This electromagnetic wave is a microwave. And the actual microwave frequency, which is about 2.4 gigahertz, I'm not quite sure, but this microwave frequency is actually created by the size of these little resonant cavities. Just like when you saw me blowing into that pan flute, the length of these little resonant cavities determined the pitch or the frequency. Now while the electrons are being blown over those little cavities on the side of this thing, 
they are eventually hitting the metal and causing heat. And that heat is dissipated by all these little tiny fins right here. Now what happens is for the microwaves to actually escape, they come out of this little antenna that's on the top right here. This thing is an insulator to protect this antenna from the metal chassis of this thing. But the microwaves are able to bounce out of those resonant cavities and actually come out of this antenna equally from all sides. Then what happens is from this antenna we have the microwave electromagnetic waves coming from all the sides. And so we have to direct these into the microwave. And for that we have something called a waveguide. And a waveguide is a piece of metal that is bent in a specific way in order to make the microwaves enter the microwave chamber. And so we have something right here. And the magnetron is obviously right here. And what happens is the waves bounce off of these little metal walls of the waveguide, making all the waves feed through something into the microwave itself. Once the microwaves are inside the microwave, they bounce off these metal walls because they are such a high frequency. So they bounce off the wall, and then they bounce again, and they bounce again. Now how these microwaves actually heat up food is because they vibrate the water molecules. So if you have a little water molecule right here, and it is hit by a microwave, it will actually cause the water molecule to start vibrating because it actually absorbs the energy from this electromagnetic wave. Now, when something vibrates, it actually creates heat. And so, if you have all these little water molecules vibrating inside of your food, these will transfer their vibration energy, their kinetic energy, into heat energy that heats up your hamburger, or your top ramen, or anything else. Okay, now let's start up this microwave and see it working. Now, you may need to add the screw inside one of the screw holes to turn on the switch, because this microwave really doesn't want you to turn it on while it is open like this. You put the screw inside so that way it turns on. So now let's see what it looks like when it runs. So I'll take this little circuit board, put it in, close the microwave and start it up. Wow. As you can see, it smoked the whole entire thing. And that's because the microwaves were bouncing around inside this microwave. And as they were bouncing around, they hit the circuit board. And they caused some components to overheat and kind of explode. Because all the energy was being absorbed by these components. That's why the microwave is making all those weird noises. Um, you also need to know, you should never run your microwave open like this. It's actually quite dangerous. And also, there are some very high voltages present. Even after your microwave is unplugged and turned off on this capacitor inside here right here. So you can discharge the capacitor just by putting some alligator clips on it. And that discharges it, because that's charged to about a few thousand volts. And even though it has a discharge resistor on it, it can still hold some voltage. And so there you go, that's how this whole entire microwave works. It's pretty cool. Now, hope you learned something in this video. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. As a separate note, I also tried to hook up my DC kilovolts gauge to the microwave to see the actual voltage produced at the capacitor, but sadly this didn't turn out so well. And even though the microwave is well under 25 kilovolts, it broke the needle inside and now it's stuck somewhere between 10 and 15. So, I guess that's life. <coughs> that smells bad.